next and last uh, discussion that I just wanted to, I sent you all. Okay, so in a surprise move, Navy um, announced their preferred alternative for the environmental impact study. They uh, they did that Monday, yesterday morning. Uh, press re they did that with me yesterday morning. The press release went out about 4.30 last night. Um, they were meeting with electeds um, all day long. The final draft of the EIS is still going to come out in September as planned, but they announced their preferred alternative early, um, which is great. Gives us two more months to talk about it and decide what our react, what our response to that is going to be. Um, so basically, they chose the worst scenario for the town of Cookville. Um, they are choosing alternative two, scenario A, which is 80% of the field carrier landing practices to be done at OLF Coopville and 20% at Ald Field. Um, there is a little bit of relief because since the, uh, the draft EIS was submitted, that number, 80% of the touch and goes at OLF would have been equivalent to 32,000 operations. And remember, an, each touch and go is two operations. Down is an operation, up is an operation. So 32,000 is the same as 16,000 patterns, circles, 15,000. And what's the limit now? They're at 6,100 operations. So even though they are, their preferred alternative is still for 80% of the touch and goes to happen at OLF, they have reduced all of the numbers in their, in every scenario by 30%. And they've done that because this EIS process has taken so long that in the last two years, um, their magic carpet software, which is um, a big, uh, training boost to the pilots and a, and a help to the pilots to make accurate landings, that is proving to be wildly successful, way more successful than they ever expected. So they're comfortable right now by reducing the number of training flights that are needed by 20% there, and then they're additionally reducing uh, the totals by 10% because they have re-looked at the mix of their squadrons, like whether they're exploratory squadrons or field uh, our carrier-based squadrons, um, they're reducing the number of pilots, I think, by one in each squadron. And so that reduces the number of training flights necessary. So what they've done is just, they've just taken 30% off of all in our, their numbers. So even though their preferred alternative that they are going to make official in September, when they release the final EIS, is 80% at Coopville, that instead of being 32,000 operations, it's 23,700. Every little bit helps. Um, so that was uh, one, of, one of the big announcements they made. Um, and really all the reasons for making that choice were, were clearly stated in the EIS. I don't really think this is a surprise to anybody. I believe the first paragraph of the EIS says they would like to do 100% of the touch and goes at Coopville. So I don't think this is really a surprise to anyone. They want to do that because they feel it is the best training site for their pilots. It is, you know, kind of, I, I, I said this, I've said this before so publicly, so I'll say it again. It's, it's like we are, the reasons they state for liking Coopville are the things that we have very intention, intentionally and consciously protected in Central Whidbey. There, it's the reserve. It's lower population, so environmentally they consider that a lower risk than flying over higher populated areas, and the dark conditions, which we have very consciously protected our dark sky. So the, the things we intentionally, 40 years ago this year, that a lot of people made a lot of personal sacrifices and and have and we have remained committed to as a community for 40 years these are the environmental aspects that that now the navy uses to say why this is a better site um and then and in right along with they like the site for the training capacities 
Um, you know, they're, they're also increasing the flights at Alt Field uh, because they have a lot of other aircraft up at Alt Field, and all of those programs are expanding. So while we have, while we would have, I'm just going to say 24,000 because it's easier to round up and not say this one over. While we would have 24,000 flights at OLF, Alt Field will have a total of 88,000 flights. Now only a few of those will be the loud touch and goes. That, that's counting all their operations. Um, they have a lot of other aircraft up there. The P-8s and helicopters and all kinds of other stuff. Um, but they have a lot of air traffic up at Alt, Alt Field. And as they keep increasing the mission sizes, um, they have more and more air traffic up there on crossed runways, which is also not an ideal situation. So especially Monday through Friday, all the touch and goes they can take away from all, you know, makes the, the flying safer, I mean, makes the flying situation safer up there. Less traffic, less air traffic. So, I mean, those were all the same reasons they've always talked about. Um, so, they're still going to release the final EIS in September. What we've been told about that is when the final comes out, it will be the official, you know, saying what they're what they're recommending to the Secretary of the Navy, who is the person that makes the final decision. There's a 30-day cooling off period, which, you know, is just a, a, a point in time for the Secretary of the Navy to make his decision. They're not asking for additional public input during that time. Um, and... So what we have gathered, what we've been told, with asking many, many questions, is that if there is any opportunity to change the outcome of that final decision, the way to do that is through our U.S., our United States representatives, Congressman Rick Larson, <coughs> Senator Maria Cantwell, and Senator Patty Murray. Our, our understanding is those three electeds are the ones that could possibly have an influence on this. So, you know, it will be no surprise to you that all of our community groups, Coopfield Community Allies, Whitby Waterkeepers, or they have all been in constant contact with the office of those three electeds, along with our more local electeds, the governor. They have been for months and months and months um, working with those groups. I told you about the meeting that we had with Senator Cantwell. I am a, a little bit thinking that this early release of this information was a result of that meeting. I think it could have been. Um, we were told that they were directed by Congress to release the information early. It, I don't know that for sure. I, I, I don't know that for sure, but that could have been a result of that meeting. So I am going to, I'm assuming, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, that you guys, that we as a council, me as mayor, are going to want to make an official response to this in some in some form and I and and I would say that if you want to do that that we do it sooner than later not wait for the final to come out um, we have the information we need and um, make it to those three representatives the governor um, our, our local representatives um, uh, maybe maybe make it to our Island County Board of Commissioners um, and whoever else we can think of. Uh, uh, so my question, okay, so my first question is, am I correct? Are you going to want to, are we going to want to develop together some kind of response for this, to this, to this uh, preferred alternative decision? I don't know. You don't know? I mean, we, we went to a lot of trouble to put out all of our questions and all of our statements. I personally don't think it would make any difference, but if others do, I'll, I'll go along with it and help prepare it. I, I don't know that that it, I'm not. Sh I don't know what difference it will make either. But I'm I personally, as the mayor, um, so if you guys don't want to do it, I can do my own letters as the mayor. Um, I think that I don't know. We just had such a big response from our community. Forty two hundred letters or comments to the EIS from, you know, greater than the town of Coopville, but the central would be area. Um, I don't know, I just feel like this uh, record of this decision requires a response of some, in some way. 
you know, I think there's a probability that a response won't make a difference. But there's a hundred percent probability that no response won't make a difference. There you go. And so I think a response has a better chance than no response. And plus, we're on record reiterating what we said before. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we should. I need. I have not read this yet. Just we just got it really late mm -hmm. yesterday mm -hmm. for me, but I have not time today, so I'm not ready to do anything tonight. That's oh no, sure. I don't want right. to take action okay. tonight. Okay. I was going to ask you if. I mean, I'm willing to start working on a letter for us all, or or I can do start working on a letter for me, um, and and then maybe put it just on the agenda as a discussion item again next time. Because I don't know what I would probably do, Catherine, is pull some of the, the points we made in our original letter. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, when we were dealing with our response in the first way, we kind of, I don't know about you, but I kind of felt like, okay, I think I'm representing, I hope I'm representing, and I think I'm representing the majority of our community. But since that deadline hit, and right at the very end, after we had done our response, I mean, it became very clear to me that we were representing the, the majority of our constituents, that they were not saying close OLF, they were not saying, you know, close the base, they weren't saying things like that, but they were saying that our uh, part in the commitment to this training program needed to be a little bit more re representative of the benefits, the pros and cons of of the good parts and the bad parts of living, commingling yeah, with the Navy base. Yes, yes. Um, and a fourfold, this would be a f four times the number of operations we have now with much louder aircraft than we've ever had operating on our little airfield. So I'd like the idea of you starting to draft something because it's time to read it then Maybe we can tweak that draft. If oh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe we, we'd even have time for a couple of, have it on the discussion list a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, we will. We absolutely will. Yeah. That sounds like a good start. Yeah. Is, it, is that okay with you, Pat? <coughs> My only question is, what does a preferred alternative mean? It means it's their, re, remember how, okay, an EIS requires the, the person that's doing, the organization that's doing the request to look at more than one option when they're going to have an environmental impact. So it requires them to look at more than one option. So if you remember, the EIS had alternative one, alternative two, alternative three, and then underneath each of those alternatives, they had three scenarios. So it was a combination, what is that? A combination of nine possibilities? Three, six, nine, yeah. And so um, they did not say, they just did the EIS, and they didn't say at that time, they did not establish which one of those nine choices would be their number one pick. So that's that's the purpose of the final EIS. Um, they're supposed to say what their, their, this is their recommendation to the Secretary of the Navy. This is after studying this, after considering all the different scenarios after getting public input doing environmental studies we would choose this scenario and then the secretary of the navy would say yes no or somewhere something different i guess so that's what's called the preferred alternative so we're just getting the benefit of knowing what their preferred alternative is a couple months before the final eis comes out so we don't know if they, if they would pick another one the secretary of navy our base, or is this is what they prefer, or? Oh, no, no, no the EIS the is being, the EIS is being done in Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. The, the EIS is being done by uh, the Federal Navy. Okay, that's what I want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. The Federal Navy, yeah, and it will be the Secretary of the Navy that makes them, in, in Washington, D.C., yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure that's like, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. So, um, one of, one of the things that um, is of concern is the belief they will still be able to protect Friday through Sunday, although I think it's Saturday and Sunday, not Friday. Friday night. Is it Friday night? Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah. Except for this week. 
they're scheduled to fly on Friday night yeah. this week for some reason. Yeah. Normally it's Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh. Mm -hmm. But that's always been a handshake deal. That's yeah. never been written. Um, uh, the other thing they announced, uh, it was kind of overshadowed by the preferred alternative, but they were also announcing their the results of their Section 106 study, which is a very specific uh, study required um, federally that that's supposed to show the impact on historic resources, right? right? Section 106 is specifically on historic resources. It's pretty broad when it's applied in EVs Reserve because it's not just on buildings, but it's on we, since our cultural landscape is so well defined and well protected in the reserve, um, it's, it's a kind of a bigger deal in the reserve when they do a 106. But they said they found no direct adverse effects. They found an indirect adverse effect to contributing landscapes and EVs. Now this 106 is definitely open for uh, community, no. community input. No. That's the point that we're in. I honestly, have not. it's a 284 page document that I got by computer, but in the same email I was told I'm going to get it in the mail, so I'm waiting to get it in the mail and not print it off at work. So I haven't even read the document yet. I just have this, they summarized the findings, so I was just passing that on to you. Um, finding an, an adverse effect, whether it's direct or indirect, in a Section 106 means that the person that's causing that effect has to, has to provide some kind of mitigation. And the mitigation is the part that is supposed to be open for, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, not comment, but has to be agreed upon by the contributing parties. So in other words, the Navy just doesn't say, I'm going to plant a tree here and call it good. They have to work a settlement with the, with the parties of record to come up with what that mitigation is going to be. And so is that the four partners? No, um, no, the, they actually have a, they have a uh, list of 22 parties of record. Oh. So anybody, it's not individual people can't be a party of record. Like so tribes. it's tribes, um, Island County, Town of Coopville, Evie's Reserve. She said this was, what do you come in a land trust might be? I'm not sure. They've got a lot of land. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have 20, they listed, they said they have 22 members of their party of record and they made the comment that that is an unusually large number of, of groups. So they're, what that means is they're absolutely at the very least required to send this 284 page document to the parties of record and that they will accept comment from, from those groups for sure. So I really can't say anything about this yet because I haven't, like I said, read the document yet. Haven't had a chance to read the document, but I'm assuming we're going to want to make an official comment on that also. Yeah, the other thing that I would be concerned about is that where they're saying that they're only recommending one APZ, and that's on the west side. So I, my, my take is that's over Admiral Cove, and so if they switched all their flights going over the east side, that would be all over Coopville. No, whatever pattern they fly, they're flying directly over Admiral's Cove. Well, doesn't matter what pattern they do. Okay, so. Admiral's Cove is at the very end of the runway. So that's okay. It, the, it's the circle, it's whether they're going over Penn Cove water or whether they're going over Central Whidbey. Right. This was, um, I, we don't, I, you haven't read it. Yeah. Well, well, well it's not that I haven't read it. The APZ, now this is, the APZ is back to the EIS. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. The thing about this is they can say, right now what they think they're going to recommend for an accident potential zone, but first they make their final decision on the EIS. After that final decision is made, after they know what the number of flights are going to be, then they do another what's called an ACUS study. Do you remember what ACUS stands for? It's, it's a very long acronym. It's an, it's an environmental study. It's another environmental study that doesn't just have to do with historical resources. It's a complete environmental study. So they do this AQ study, and based on that, the, the Navy will recommend to the local um, 
municipal authorities, so in this case, Coopville and Island County, what they are recommending for an accident potential zone. So un until they have a number of flights finalized, and, un and until they do that environmental study, th they, ca they can't really tell us what they're going to recommend. And, and they're not held to anything that they tell us right now. You know, I was kind of surprised to see this this diagram that only had one pattern listed because everything I've seen up before this had two had both patterns listed as an as would that they would become an accident potential zone. They both every map I've seen conveniently the town the actual town limits don't fall within the APZ's zone. The, the circles, the ovals don't touch the town of Coopville, but you got to remember between the base and Coopville to get to that runway, they are flying directly over our town. So we are in a, especially if they're increasing the number of flights to, from 3,000 to 12,000 a year, um, that's a lot more traffic going over the town. So I just wanted you to, you know, the, the press release went out. Um, I haven't even looked at our local paper online. I'm sure it will be a front page story tomorrow. Um, so I just want to make sure that you guys knew what was going on, what the latest was. Okay. Thank you. Um, when we're all done with the Navy, last time you thought we might have the Memorandum of Understanding. Yes. And I didn't think of that. <laughs> Now I'm shooting for July 10th. Okay. We are working on it. It is gone. I it went back to the Navy today for the. They sent it to me. We sent it back. They sent it to me. I sent it back again today. So um, it's it's being worked on, worked over by attorneys. I thought maybe you were being distracted <coughs> by this, and they were no. They, they haven't put anything off. They just no, 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 no. Happening simultaneously. No, and you guys are just gonna laugh. It's a very simple five page. Agreement. It's not like some giant thing for how long it's taken. So, but yes, I, I really hope that is our goal. That's our date. I was this just is, thinking when you were talking about everything they have to go through before they get this final plan, you know, this is nothing compared to that. Everything, mm -hmm. everything takes so much time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, it does. I have a question. I read an article in Seattle Times about uh, the PFAS. PFACs and that one of the federal agencies it, it has lowered the limit. Did you read that? Yes. No federal agency has lowered any limit. Okay. A, a recommendation. A federal. Uh, I don't even think it was a recommendation because it was not an agency that makes. It was something. Toxicology, the Center for okay. Toxicology and that. Disease Center. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, this has been the this has been the study that's been all over the news that President Trump's administration squashed, yes. and so it did come out this weekend. Um, it's you know the thing it's turned into a way bigger thing because that because it was apparently hidden for a while. It's one of many many studies okay. about PFAS. It has no regulatory. Oh, absolutely not. And I don't even know that it's it might be a it, it's their opinion. It's this agency's okay. opinion that the advisory levels are too high. That's a lot of people's opinions. And there's a lot of stuff going on, specifically in the state of Washington yeah. right now, with our state EPA, our state Board of Health, yeah. our state Department of Ecology. They're all looking at this. There's a couple big, uh, highly respected community groups that are making recommendations. I have no doubt that that changes will be made to our state regulations. Um, I know that one of those highly respected groups has made a recommendation at a state level that um, that instead of only looking at an advisory level for two of the compounds, that they increase it to four of the compounds. And there's dozens of these compounds that fall under this PFAS family, but most of them haven't had enough research yet to be able to make recommendations about them. Um, so there's a recommendation to add two more compounds. There's recommendations to lower the limit from 70 parts per trillion. There's also recommendations to make it regulatory and not advisory. Um, it's getting a lot of attention at a state level. It's become a very high priority for our State Board of Health, and they would be the ones, the State Board of Health 
will be the organization that takes these recommendations and changes the policy. If, if they're going to change it, <coughs> that's who will do it. And that's who's working on it now. I fully expect there to be some kind of changes in the next year or two. The filter that the Navy is working on mm -hmm. will filter down below recommendations, recommended changes, correct? Or do we know? Oh, we don't know what those recommended... We can't, I can't answer that question because we don't know what the recommended changes are. But we, do we know how much it will filter out? Oh, yeah. It will, base, it will filter the R2 comrades down to non attack. Okay. Um, and since this has been, this is not new news, this has been being talked about since PFAS has become a state issue and a national issue, what you won't see in this MOU, because this MOU is not that detailed, but will, what you will see very shortly in the 30% design is from the very beginning, the Navy is designing their filter system to be added on to. In both room, electrical capacity, generator capacity, room in the building, because they are very well, they are building us a bigger than we need filter system right now. They're building a filter system for us that will treat more water than we physically have the capacity to produce right now. Okay? That's good. But they're, in addition to that, leaving room in this plumbing and electrical scheme and the building if they have to add additional treatment. Because it, it might be additional treatment because in the future we need more capacity, but it also might be different treatment if the regulations change and if the compounds change. They are being, in my opinion, very proactive about wanting to take care of Coopville no matter what happens to our state regulations. Any other questions? Are we done? Yeah, we're done.